Welcome to Sci-5. I'm your host, Chris J. Couric. On Sci-5, we talk about five scientific and technological innovations that happened this week. This week, we'll be talking about de-icing technology, maximized computing power, and more. A breakthrough is created at UC Berkeley where they've developed a code and a machine to represent the maximum amount of computing power you can have under one of the laws of thermodynamics. The new process would use approximately one millionth the amount of energy required to do what a normal processor does, as well as be 10,000 times smaller. This calculation was created by a supercomputer and is about as efficient as you could make a computer using the current understanding of physics that we have. The energy required is that of one photon being transferred from one atom to another, with, which is as low as it gets. With the exception of quantum computers, this will be the smallest we can make it under today's standards and will drastically reduce the size of our processors, making cell phones seem large in comparison. A new theory suggests that at some level, gravity must be a quantum force. Thus far, no one has made the connection between the large-scale macrogravity and the micro-scale quantum gravity that physicists assure us must exist. As LIGO has discovered that black holes create gravitational waves, and in its prediction, the black holes discovered emitted about three times the solar mass of our sun into space in the form of gravitational waves, scientists are certain there must be some connection between the macro scale gravitational wave and the quantum scale interactions. Evidence suggests that the Big Bang itself created a large amount of gravitational waves during its inception. As the cosmic background radiation is the telltale signs of that event, we should be able to, with a far more sensitive device, discover what types of gravitational waves existed at that period. By analyzing the CMB with far more sensitive equipment, scientists hope to find evidence of gravitons or the force carrying particle for the gravitational waves. A group of Norwegian scientists may have discovered the causation behind all shipwrecks in the Bermuda Triangle. A recent ocean survey in the area has revealed kilometer wide, 150 foot deep craters at the sea floor. The prediction states that these massive craters were made by huge bubbles of methane rising from vents, building underground and bursting, causing ships to capsize, sink, and in general have hull damage. This may also explain why so much heat can arise from the area causing massive storm systems and causing issues for navigation while flying over the Bermuda Triangle. I just think it's awesome that we found the reason behind all of the travesties that occurred there, and it isn't some woo-woo. Scientists at the Large Hadron Glider are still gathering new data. From this data, they have concluded that some findings do not coincide with the current understanding of the physics model that they use. The Large Hadron Collider smashes together particles at near light speed velocities in order to get a better understanding of the fundamental forces of nature at play. Through more data analysis, scientists have discovered that a particle called the beam meson has a decay rate which does not coincide with our understanding of standard physics. A new theory may need to be developed or some sort of other extreme circumstances is preventing scientists from understanding why this occurs. This is nearly as significant as the discovery of the Higgs boson. Researchers at the University of Michigan have developed a de-icing tool that could stick to any surface. The spray-on is similar to an aquaphobic substance which prevents objects from having humidity stick to them, as this is a ice-phobic substance that prevents ice from sticking to the object. According to the team, 
The de-icing spray-on is so effective that even the slightest wind or the littlest incline is enough to create a surface that could de-ice itself without any effort. The first use this chemical should see is in frozen food packaging as we don't enjoy frozen food sticking together. After that, you should expect it to be seen in colder environments where citizens do not enjoy their vehicles being coated in this type of object. People don't like ice, so this should be useful. That's all for this week. We'll see you next time on Sci-Five.